Hello and welcome to my channel. Try this as a series breaking down a certain game or playstyle of the game. Today we're going to be talking Commander and breaking down Elminster. The video is broken down in the chapters which you can find in the description or in the timeline. I'll be briefly covering Elminster, then cover some win conditions and how we'll get there. I'll talk about some mana base and card draw strategies. I'll discuss other synergistic cards in the deck and why I think they'll help. I'll cover some other cards I cut from my example list, why they didn't fit my list but they might fit yours. And finally I'll move on to some budget suggestions for the deck. If you enjoy this content, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It really helps other viewers discover the content I produce and is a great way to show support. With that said, let's dive in. Elminster is a planeswalker that costs 3 white blue and enters with 5 loyalty counters. He has a passive ability that reads, whenever you scry, the next instant or sorcery spell you cast this turn costs x less the cast, where x is the number of cards looked at while scrying this way. He has a plus 2 ability that reads, draw a card then scry 2, and he has a minus 3 ability that reads, exile the top card of your library, create a number of 1-1 one, one blue fairy dragon creature tokens with flying equal to that card's mana value. This commander was actually suggested to me by a viewer, so if you enjoy this content and have any suggestions for interesting commanders to play, please let me know in the comments below. So Elminster is a pretty interesting and fun commander to build around, but I ran into some issues with the deck being sort of a solitaire deck. Solitaire deck meaning you spend an excessive amount of time playing the game yourself versus the time your opponents do. Playing into his passive ability just kind of naturally makes the deck play out this way. Constantly scrying, drawing cards, and repeating can sort of be a boring experience for your opponents. To compound with that, Elminster synergizes very well with extra turn cards. There are quite a few that are high CMC to play into his token generation effect and passive abilities. If your table doesn't have issues with a solitaire style deck, then no worries, but for me I'm going to try to mitigate this as much as possible. There will be no extra turn cards in the deck, but I'll shout out some suggestions later in the video if you want to go that route. Overall, Elminster provides an interesting playstyle I normally don't explore. He's a cool design that while powerful doesn't feel incredibly pushed. Also, I think it offers an interesting new take for Spellslinger decks or Azorius Flyers. I'm building this deck as a token flying tribal list to synergize with Elminster's minus 3 ability. In Azorius, there are several good cards to generate a ton of tokens for us and other high CMC cards we can exile to make even more. With Elminster providing great card advantage, we should be able to quickly filter through our deck and get the cards we need for the win. I'm running Approach of the Second Sun as an alternate win condition for the deck. Being a sorcery, Elminster will give us a cost reduction. His plus one ability will also speed up getting to the second cast since he can effectively dive through three cards. I'm also running Strixhaven Stadium in this deck as another alternate win condition. With all of the flying tokens we can make in the list, it should be easy to suddenly remove players from the game with this ability. Starting off is the auto includes in Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, and Thematic Compass. I've always found Thematic Compass to be a reliable card at any point in the game. It can help ensure land drops in early to mid game and then flip into a strictly better maze of it to protect us from Voltron commanders and other problem creatures. Gold and Silver Mirror are some classic mana dorks that are useful in most decks. These two cards along with Ornithopter of Paradise can help propel us into more expensive ramp cards like Solemn Simulacrum which can fetch us a basic land and then draw us a card on death. The Sad Robot is a useful blocker to protect Elminster as we don't really care if it dies in combat. Sword of Hearth and Home and Wayfarer's Bubble will also fetch us some basics to field. Since we're building around flyers for this deck, we'll have plenty of opportunities to connect with the sword. Burnished Heart and Smothering Tithe will wrap up our ramp section of this deck. We don't need a ton of ramp in this deck, as all the scrying and card draw should always ensure we make our land drops. Between these and Strixhaven Stadium, we should be all set for mana in most games. Elminster will provide a significant amount of card advantage for the deck. If we're all set on draws, then we could just generate more creatures. He's pretty versatile, and it's always nice to have card draw in the command zone. Skull Clamp and Sensei's Divining Top are two fantastic cards to provide card advantage. Elminster's tokens work well with Skull Clamp, and the top helps ensure we exile the right card with his minus 3 ability. Behold the Multiverse and Forcey are two simple cards that allow us to scry then draw cards. They help feed Elminster's passive ability so we can follow them up with other spells. Precognitive Perception and Brainstorm provide some additional synergy. Perception can scry and then draw like the last two cards I mentioned, while also being a sizable CMC to exile with Elminster. Brainstorm will help fix our deck like Sensei's Divine Top for Elminster's minus 3 ability. Similar to Brainstorm in the top is Cavalier of Gale's ETB ability. Its death trigger will also play into Elminster's passive. It's a flyer on top of all of this to play into some of our anthem effects and overall deck theme. Curiosity Crafter and Archmaid Amirius are two solid utility cards in this deck. We're not really abusing copy effects for Amirius, but it's always nice to get some extra draws for all the instants and sorceries in the deck. 
Curiosity Crafter works very well with all the tokens we can produce with Elminster or other effects. It is an Amei ability though, so keep that in mind so you don't accidentally duck yourself. Court of Grace will introduce Monarch, and Ristic Study is just a solid card in any deck with access to blue. The court will also play into our flying theme regardless if we're the Monarch or not. Archivist of Ogma and Esper Sentinel are two newer commander staples for white card draw. I think there's really enough in this deck, and neither play into the flying theme, so these might be good budget cuts for your deck. All the same, they're cheap to cast and normally provide plenty of value. To wrap it up is Seagate Restoration, which can double as a land drop for us. It will also give us no maximum hand size, and we normally draw us a good amount of cards. Elminster can reduce the cost of it, and being a 7 CMC means we can exile it for some flyers if we need to. Overall, it's just a great value card to have. Some of our best token generation effects are Ancient Gold Dragon, Dovescape, and Stormherd. The Dragon and Stormherd would normally build up a lethal board state on their own. Dovescape shuts down most of our opponent's game plans and playing to our own go-wide strategy. Though it counters our cards also, it should be okay since we're playing to exile most of them for Elminster's minus 3 ability anyway. Though this generates blockers for our opponents, we should be able to outvalue them with our Anthem creatures and other high CMC cards. Annoyed Procession and Divine Visitation synergizes incredibly well with our deck. With all the token generation effects in this list and a reliable one in our commander, we should get plenty of value from Anointed Procession. Divine Visitation will upgrade most of our tokens we can create to 4-4 creatures, which is a huge power swing for us in the air. Cards like Elish Nord and Cathar's Crusade will buff our creatures significantly. Since most of our token generation effects happen all at once, Cathar's Crusade will provide a massive amount of counters. Elish Norn with Dovescape is admittedly kind of mean since none of the tokens our opponents make will survive, but it provides a huge power swing for our tokens. It produces a pretty reliable lock in the game that's pretty difficult for most decks to get out of. Intangible Virtue and Favorable Winds are two simple enchantments that will provide a significant anthem for our deck. Most of the tokens we make are 1-1s, so this will easily double or triple up the power of our board presence. Intangible Virtue will also give our tokens Vigilance to help protect us and Elminster. Empyrean Eagle and Thunderclap Wyvern will also anthem our flyers. The Wyvern can provide the anthem as a combat trick to catch some of our opponents off guard. Oath of Teferi and Spark Double will help speed up Elminster's value engine. We could double up our other creatures with Spark Double, but normally I think it would be best to get another Elminster. This way we can scry with one Planeswalker and generate tokens with the other. Also the cost reduction gets doubled up this way. Sigiled Starfish and Thassa God of the Sea are creatures that provide some scrying every turn. The scry is pretty minor, but every little bit is useful in this deck. I normally don't cover board wipes, but Hour of Reckoning is one worth shouting out as we'll mostly have token creatures. This can normally give us a one-sided board wipe and we can easily cast it with Convoke. Mystic Speculation is an amazing card that can help us filter the top of our deck. Elminster's passive ability actually pays for the buyback on this card, allowing us to scry for 3 just with 1 blue mana. This helps us dig for our second approach of the second sun, or can just dig for value. The Cutting Room Floor is where I talk about some cards around or over $10 at the time of recording that I cut from my list for various reasons but are worth mentioning the run. Though these cards didn't find a home in my list, they might find a home in yours. Luminarch's Ascension is an infamous token generation effect. It makes sense to run it in a flying tribal list, but I wanted to play into Elminster's abilities and opted to include cards that synergized with him more. I think it would be a good replacement for Quarter Grace or something else that draws us cards. Elminster gives us plenty of card advantage, so if you're struggling to generate creatures, this might be a good replacement. Elspeth's Sun's Champion can give us a one-sided board wipe in most cases. Even with a couple of our Anthem effects out, our tokens will mostly be safe from this ability. Her Anthem is very useful with all the tokens we can make, even if the flying is redundant. Eldrazi Monument is mostly just worth running to give our creatures indestructible. The Anthem isn't really needed and the flying is redundant. However, we should be generating plenty of creatures to sacrifice for the upkeep trigger, making it an easy card to run. Time Stretch, Expropriate, and Nexus of Fate all play into the extra turn theme and works well with Elminster. His passive ability makes casting expensive cards like these very easy, making extra turn deck archetypes excel. As I mentioned before, I found Elminster to be already sort of a solitaire deck, and that would be especially true for extra turns. I think it's a disservice not to mention it, but keep in mind how your pod will react to this. I think most players would be annoyed to go off against infinite turn decks. Halo Fountain is a good alternate win condition with all the tokens we should be able to produce. I think Strixhaven is a little bit more reliable, but there's really no reason not to run both. I think this would be a solid budget replacement for expensive cards like Ristic Study. Good luck winning with this cool effect if you decide to run it. Draco is mostly just a card with a huge CMC for Elminster's token generation effect. In only a two color deck, his upkeep trigger would be very expensive to pay for and isn't really worth running as a creature. However, getting 16 1-1 flyers with Elminster's ability makes it worth mentioning. 
Binding of Thassa is a solid card in this deck. It works with tokens and being a mate trigger, we don't have to worry about decking ourselves. It's just a really good card for a flying tribal deck and it's an easy replacement for cards like Rhystic Study or Esper Sentinel. Flux Channeler really only helps Elminster or counters provided by Cathar's Crusade. There are plenty of non-creature spells in this deck, so you should get plenty of mileage with this creature. Netherese Puzzle Ward is a good budget replacement for Thassa as it will normally scry more on upkeep. I like having the indestructible enchantment, but this card is arguably better in this deck and is budget friendly. Sephira's Sky's Blade will provide indestructible to most of our creatures. I think if removal or board wipes are very common in your pod, then this card is probably worth running. Though we should reliably be able to go wide in the air to get around blockers, it always helps not to lose creatures in combat. On top of all that, it has lifelink to heal us, which is a nice bonus. Ugin's Insight is a solid scry and draw card. You could scry for 5 and then have a sizable cost reduction for the next spell, assuming Elminster is out. I didn't cover every card in this deck or every suggestion I have for Elminster, so if you'd like to see the rest, check out the decklist in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing to the channel. Comment below on cards you think synergize well with this commander, and if you have any suggestions for commanders to build in the future. Thank you so much for watching, good luck, and have fun.